Well, Isaac, you know, part of this podcast is really about bringing um, our listeners here, uh, you know, stories of entrepreneurs like yourself um, and hearing that story. And this has just been, first of all, I think you've been an ideal first guest because you're also breeding entrepreneurs. And, uh, and that's really cool. And, and I'm really excited about that. But I want, if we could take a step back for a few minutes, and I want to learn a little bit about your own challenges of starting Praxis. Um, and, uh, you know, what have been, you know, we've heard some of your, I think, accomplishments and a little bit about it, but what, what were some of the challenges as you were getting started? Where were you at? Were you in another job where you had to make a decision to, to kind of venture out on your own to start this uh, company? Yeah, it was, uh, the scariest thing I've ever done and the hardest thing I've ever done by far the most rewarding. And it's still hard. It's not like, oh, we're at some plateau where just, you know, Everything's easy. I mean, you got to fight and claw for everything when you're when you're running a business. But you know, I have. I guess I would not have called myself this at the time, but I've I've been kind of entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial curious um, for a long time. Right out of right out of college, my brother and I started a business and we ran that for a while. And it was okay. It didn't do all that well. Um, so we kind of folded up shop, and I, I went along and, and did a series of other other jobs, primarily working. Um, and a couple of nonprofits advancing sort of free market ideas. Um, and I, I've, you know, always been somebody who wherever I work, I like to create new things. I like to build new programs or projects and, and kind of launch things and then find people who are better than me at running them and hand them off. And so I've always sort of had that bug and I like autonomy. I like to kind of do things my own way. Um, and so I was working, I was doing fundraising at a, at a nonprofit, the Institute for Humane Studies, a phenomenal place, and, you know, loved it. Wonderful job, wonderful organization. And this, this thing kept building in me, this kind of restlessness, like, I don't want to settle in. This, I'm good at this job, I like it, I'm doing well, but, like, I know I want to be more challenged. I want things to be harder for me. When, when things start to come easy... I always feel a little bit itchy, like I've got to push myself into something new, into some new territory. And so I got the itch. And I always kind of like irritated with myself, like, what is wrong with me? Why am I so discontent? I have this great job, blah, blah, blah. What? Like, you know, why do I always get this itch to like move on to something new? But, but I couldn't help it. So one day, I mean, this sounds so cheesy, but it's totally, <laughs> it's totally true. So I'm, I'm kind of frustrated, and, and I think I had gotten back from a trip. I traveled a lot for my work, and I, I just I go to the beach. I live down here in Charleston, South Carolina, and I go to the beach when I need to clear my head. I go walk on the beach, and I hadn't thought about these ideas of an alternative form of college for years. I had, I had toyed with it on and off for years and never did anything with it, and I had kind of forgotten about it. I'm walking on the beach. And like in my mind's eye, I see the word praxis in all caps, like on the horizon. I don't like literally see it. I know I, you know, I wasn't like hallucinating that it was there, but I, I saw it in my mind's eye out of nowhere. It just popped up into my, my mind and immediately it was like a flood. I was like, oh my gosh, why not have people do like self-directed, tailored, amazing online curriculum while working with entrepreneurs and but and the whole thing just flooded in my mind. I got in my car, I drove home, I went up to my office and I just typed for like two, three hours. I typed out like a 12 page business plan. And it was like, I was like exhausted when I was done. And I've had a lot of ideas before. I've had a lot of ideas for organizations or businesses and they're in a folder somewhere. And I'll type them up and be like, that's cool. I'll sit on that. Maybe I'll come back to that someday. This one was different. I was like, this seems legit. There's something about this. Like I have to know if this could work. And so I sent it to a few people and the people I sent it to were like, you have to do this. And I was like, I know, I think I have to do this. I have no choice. And so I decided to see how far I could get Praxis while I was working at my current job. Um, you know, without getting, giving short shrift to, to my job, which I didn't. I mean, I was, I was pouring myself into it. I loved it and trying to do Praxis, um, build it on the side with no capital, just bootstrapping it, my own, you know, credit card and, and trading favors with people. I mean, I had to dig deep into my social capital and say, hey, remember when I helped you get that job? Could you design a website for me for free? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And um, so my goal was to do one thing every day to make Praxis more valuable uh, as, a, as a company, as an idea. So you go, you buy the domain name, you 
refine the business plan. You get somebody to build a basic website. You, I started lining up people to help me build the curriculum modules, and I was trading pieces of equity, you know. And most of the people did it because they liked the idea and they liked me, not because they were like, "Oh, this piece of equity in this company is going to make me rich someday." Um, but because I had built a lot of social capital over the years, um, and I had to cash it all in, and, and so pushing it as far as I could, and I made the decision rather than because I'm not in a position. I have a family and everything to to just. Like quit and go full time unless I had some sort of you know capital that I had raised to, to to let me afford to do that. So I decided to just bootstrap it as far as I could, and I highly recommend this to say I want to get to the point where I literally can't take another step without capital before I go seek capital. I want to have the most valuable product I can. So I actually got the the company up. I got the website launched. I got the application open, and I got business partners lined up, and we had applications rolling in for the first class. And um, I started to get all these invitations to go speak places and it started to really conflict and like, okay, now it's starting to, to be a detriment to my job if I have to pick one or the other. And that's when I went out and I raised um, basically an angel investment to, to give me enough to go for, you know, a year or not even that um, to get it off the ground and, uh, and made that leap full time and um, – and, and, you know, my wife, I've got three kids, like, hey, I want to do this. Are you in? I mean, I, I want you to tell me if you're not, because if you're not, I don't want us to, like, be fighting all the time. She took, like, two weeks to give me an answer, and it was the worst two weeks of my life. I'm like, what's she going to say? What's she? She's like, all right, I'm in. Let's do this. And we did, man. We jumped in, and, and uh, you know, at any given time, there's no, there's no huge buffer of, oh, don't worry, I'm secure. I've, you know, it's like, uh, we're, we're very short runway as most startups, uh, at any given time. And, and when, you know, when I've raised capital, I put it back into to the company for the most part. Um, but I have never been happier. 